Well, welcome back to uh, Cold House Sunday. I wanted to give some things that I've had some emails sent to me on this matter of uh, foreclosures of churches. You know, we need documentation. People can't believe it. So let me share some things that were sent to my way by Mary, uh, my dear sister in Christ. This is uh, one website. It's called uh, loopnet.com Georgia Churches for Sale. I mean, I mean, you won't believe this. Here's all the different churches and their prices. One million dollars, three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, hundred fifty thousand dollars, four hundred fifty thousand dollars, three hundred fifty thousand dollars, eight hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars. It goes on and on and on, up into the millions of dollars. This is a listing of just the Georgia area. That's just one state. You know. And uh, that's just the first page of it all. And there's five pages to all this. Five pages of uh, churches for sale. Tell me this isn't happening. There's more. More churches for sale. For sale. For sale. I mean, look at that. Six million dollars. Nine hundred and... Nine hundred thousand. Six million dollars. Imagine that. Don't buy it. Tell me people aren't getting out of these buildings. Getting out of the overhead. Well, that's just one site. Let me stop here and come to another site. Hold on just a minute. Now, take a look at the date. July the 5th, uh, 2011. So it's just an old article. About, you can imagine what's happened since then. Four years later. This is Atlanta. Again, Georgia. America's mortgage crisis is far from over. Homeowners are not the only ones in the red. Church congregations across this country are losing their properties at an alarming rate. High Ground Empowerment Center is a small church in the heart of Atlanta's fine city. The neighborhood Martin Luther King Jr. once called home from 1965 to uh, 1968. Jexter Johnson grew up in the historical church on Spencer Street. It's the only church he had ever regularly attended. He uh, became the pastor in 1994. Now he says, God has blessed me with a wonderful group of people who love God, love ministry, and love their pastor. Weathering the storm. Higher ground actually began in 1903. At Mount uh, Gilead uh, Baptist Church, but in 2009, the pastor said God moved him and his congregation to change the, the name to Higher Ground. Now the Lord gave me that thought years ago, just some time ago. He talked about getting to Higher Ground, and he had mentioned, and I had this thought of going to Georgia. Well, now I see it quite differently now. <laughs> you know. I've still got that up. I got my house on market. I may move, may not move. I always wanted to go to Georgia. I liked the mountain the area. But he said this thing about higher ground. I could not have known back then what he was talking about. Look at that. I mean, talk about confirmation. That's the confirmation there. Higher ground. I know what he's talking about now. So, the new name marked the church's rise from ruin after 2008 tornado knocked down a steeple. <laughs> now, Catch that. Remember I brought out one of those videos? And uh, it was your church and no uh, tornado <laughs> proof, earthquake proof. All right. Ripped off this roof and left the congregation without a sanctuary for more than a year. It shook the foundation of a church. Did it now? Really, did it? Where's your foundation at? But now, a legal storm is threatening to take away that renovated building. Higher Ground saw its membership decline in the 20 months it was de displaced, giving also decreased as some congregations lost their jobs in the economical downturn. The property value of the church building also dropped, leaving members with a one million 
one million dollar mortgage for building today and much less. Originally, we we had a one point one million dollar loan. We have negotiated down to six hundred thousand. They want their property. Johnson explained, "They want us out, and there's no more negotiating with the bank. They want us out now." I mean, I mean, I said this stuff in my last couple of videos here, and I wondered if you really believed it. And that, oh, this ain't happening. Our church is flourishing. Now we have a great congregation here. Ah, oh, higher ground still occupies building as its lawyers appeal the church's case in Fulton County Superior Court. Maybe they'll use a racial court. I mean, like that one church I mentioned. It's not a matter of racial. You may not want to believe this, and I've been putting this warning out there, and you can say, well, that's just your squirrely thinking, Paul. It isn't happening. God is not trying to wean the church from its buildings. I said, if you don't do it, if you don't do this, the world will. And God will use the world like you use Nebuchadnezzar as you use Pilate for this world to fulfill his will. And I'm telling you, he's telling you, get out of these buildings while you still can. Where will we go? Ask him. More buildings in foreclosure, reading on here. And it takes a short drive to find other church buildings with foreclosure notices and locked doors. Well, and then I don't need to read that. You can read it for yourself here. I'll, I'll put it up there. You can pause this and read all you want. Well, I'll put the link down below and you can read it for yourself. Well, that's back in 2011. You think it got any better? It's gotten worse. So let me pause if I got any more to add to this. This is another uh, link that uh, Mary sent me. It comes from Wikipedia. The El Rey Jesus. Jesus, the King Jesus Ministry. It's located in Miami, Florida. Now I won't read the whole article. I'll give you the link and read it for yourself. Now it says, with a general attendance between 15,000 and 20,000 individuals per week. Imagine that. Okay, I, I want to get too much in that. It shows you how it, the church founders, how it grew, how it grew fast. All right, made up a lot of Hispanic people. But I got scrolling down here after reading this whole article here. Like I was saying, if you want to read it, you can either look the link or you can pause this video and read it and, and go on and go on further and further. I got down here and I come against a couple of these articles that bond references. Let me show you something. <coughs> Remember in light of the 501c3. Remember the stipulations that would stay independent from supporting political candidates. Now catch what happens next here. Let me go on here. Here it is. This is our Tampa Bay Times. Governor, this is back in, so it's an old article, 2010, but it's trying to, I'm just trying to show you a point. This is going to any time. It probably just happened after this. Uh, government candidates visit the faithful. Sink to churches. <laughs> That's a play on word, just so I mean. Scott to church, then football. Yeah. They go from churches, then they go to the football games and try to get in their conjure up some support for their running for governor. So it's two Sundays away from election day, and do you know where your candidates are? Democrat Alex Sink, see the words, Sink to churches. <laughs> they sink the one. See the playing words, what the media's trying to say? They're stooping low. They're going to churches to get support. They're 501c3. They should not be allowed to do that. No, they don't say that. That's implied. Sink to churches. Alex Sink and Republican Rick Scott. <laughs> or in church this morning visiting congregations in Miami and Orlando. Scott attended the L. Ray Jesus Church in Miami, a Christian Pentecostal church with one of the largest Hispanic following in the country. Scott then 
continued greeting the faithful, this time football worshippers, with a visit to the Miami Dolphin game. I mean, they're playing both ends. And Miami Dolphins are not 501c, so you, but the church is. That's just, you know, they just piled this up and added up one day. When they walk in there, imagine with a facility that big, how much the taxes would be on that. Imagine the money's coming in there. If they find out not to, to have violated the 501c3 ruling, they'll shut them down tomorrow. Confiscate all this property. I mean, what am I trying to say? Well, you figure that. Figure it out. Let me pause a minute. Well, here's another link. It's called uh, www.pewforum.org. If you ever wanted to read something, read this. I mean, it sounds like that they're saying it's okay. And then in the next bit they said, but. If you do this, this is going to occur. Can, uh, can a candidate come to a church? Yeah, he can come to a church. But if you have him come to the church, now you may favor him being a conservative, you would have to have the liberal candidate the following week come to your church and give his view. <laughs> you may not want that. And if you don't do that, and become biased to a candidate, they can take your 501c3 uh, 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 rights away. I mean, there's a lot of different things in here. Let me go here. Where was that one at? Oh, let me pause a minute so I can find it. There I have mentioned um, one of I believe it's part two about you can't say nothing against gays, homosexuality, abortion, all the different things you know. You can't really be tax exempt and say this kind of thing to your pulpit. Here's an example of something that took place. There's the branch ministries uh, versus uh Rosetti uh, case, the Rosati case. Four days before the 1992 presidential election, a church at Pierce Creek in Birmingham, New York, placed a full-page advertisement in USA Today and the Washington Times. The ad began with the heading, Christians beware, do not put the economy ahead of the Ten Commandments. The ad cited biblical passages and stated that Governor uh, Bill Clinton supported abortion, on demand, homosexuality, and the distribution of condoms to teenagers in public schools. He had concluded with the, with the question, how then can we vote for Bill Clinton? At the bottom of the ad, in fine print, the following notice appeared. This advertisement was co-sponsored by a church at Pierce Creek, uh, David S. Little, J. Little, senior pastor and by churches and concerned Christians nationwide. The tax deductible the tax deductible donations for this advertisement gladly accepted. Make donations to the church at Pierce Creek. Following the special procedures for church audits, the IRS evoked the church's section 501c3 tax exemption on the ground that it violated the political campaign intervention prohibition. The church challenged the IRS in court, claiming that the re re revocation of its tax exempt status violated the Internal Revenue Code, both the free speech and free exercise clause of the First Amendment and the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. The church also claimed that it had been singled out for prosecution on account of its political views. The district court dismissed the case. 
concluding that the IRS had authority under the Internal Revenue Code to evoke the, the church's tax exempt status and that the revocation did not violate the Religious Freedom Action or the Free Speech or Free Exercise Clause. Court also concluded that in evoking the church's tax exemptions, the IRS has not engaged in selective prosecution or per prosecution of viewpoint discrimination. How about that? <laughs> oh God! Of course, the church appealed, and the decision of the of the appealed the decision of the district court, U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit affirm the district court's decision on every count. <laughs> Among other things, the court appeals noted that the church had an alternative means of engaging the political active because it could establish a related, separate, incorporated organization under Section 501c4 or the Internal Revenue Code and that the uh, separate organization could express opinions about candidates and even establish a PAC through which political contributions might be made. Of course, not tax-deductible church funds could be used to support the political activities of the Section 501c4 organization or its PAC. You know, none of this would occur it could not have occurred before 1954. But why did they join this? Like uh, the article back in uh, the first part one of this. They just didn't know. They're ignorant. Two, everybody else was joining, uh, getting into the 501c3 exemption. Or they've listened to some manly man of the world, CPA of the world, trying to help them to make more bucks and to give them more money and be a tax exempt, you know. Well, some of these churches today, the profitability in those churches is really questionable. Now, that may come out. Let me see if I can find that piece. Uh, if not, uh, if I don't find it, then that, uh, I don't know if I want to do any more on this. It's just like, read this. I'm not going to give it. Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't want people distracted. In my series, staying on this road, I'm seeing these things left and right of me. I'm saying, Lord, what about this? People are concerned; they want to go off and join the battle here. You want me to join that battle? So I read about, it, find out about. It. I'm saying, Hey, they brought this on themselves. Maybe you should ask God. Like I'm saying, there are many churches today that are getting out of this 501c. We never joined it to begin with. But some are so into it and got these CPAs and everybody else involved and they're making so much money they don't dare to get out. They have a rock hanging over their head. They're corrupt. <laughs> you know? I mean, you shouldn't be there. So let me, let me see me pause. If I, if I don't find something, I may not be getting any more out on this subject matter right now. Well, here's another one. So about Americans continue to be weary, wary of church involvement in partisan politics, right? In July, this is 2012, Pew Research Center surveyed, survey asked American adults whether they think churches and other houses of worship should come out in favor of one candidate over another during political elections. Two-thirds said they should not. More on this and questions related and related issues. See uh, this other article down there. You know, remember Romney, his Mormon religion? <laughs> God. And also see the Pew Forum uh, 2012 guide to, uh, which I just had that prior to this, on political activity by a religious organization. Preaching politics from the pulpit. There's warnings there. Well, I could have brought out video one. 
Since 1954, the IRS has imposed limits on the political activities of tax-exempt organizations, including churches and other, it should not have included churches, but they volunteered, they went under that jurisdiction, including churches and other religious institutions. Some religious leaders defend the IRS rules, saying they prevent churches from getting too deeply involved in partisan politics. Others see the rules as an infringement, or abridgment of free speech. For example, on Sunday, October the seventh, it's back to 2012. The, that I came out. I think I had that link to this. The Christian Advocate Group Alliance Defending Freedom, formerly the Alliance Defense Fund, will sponsor Pulpit Freedom Sunday, an annual event to promote the inherent right of American pastors to choose and deliver uh, the content of their sermons without fear that the IRS will investigate or punish the church because of something a pastor says from the pulpit. You think they're not watching you? They're building their case. I mean... Oh, there it is. There's that. Oh, God. Yeah. I think I've made my case here. I, I don't think I even want to get in anymore. There's so much more. I mean, you go on the website, you'll see all kind of things about this. I mean, it could just slow you down. I'm at a rest stop now on my road. I keep mentioning my series, the, the narrow road, stay on a narrow road. And I think now I'm going to get back in my car, pull out off the exit. And it's on the road. It's not off the road. And move on. God bless you. I hope you got something out of somebody's input here. God bless you.